Welcome to the Cross Border Interviews. I'm Christopher Brown. Today, we are honored to be sitting down and speaking with Lac-LaBiche County Councilor Charlene Moore. Lac-LaBiche County is proud to be a diverse, healthy, and safe community. Their citizens are engaged and enjoy enhanced social and recreational amenities within the county. Lac-LaBiche County is economically resilient as they continue to invest in top quality infrastructure and services for its residents. They're environmental stewards who promote the natural assets they have, making Lac-LaBiche County the destination choice for Northern Alberta. But before we start this interview, we want to apologize and take a moment and do so. The audio quality on my end of the interview was not as expect it. Due to a technical issue with our recording equipment, my audio was not picked up through the mixer as it is right now. So I do apologize wholeheartedly for the audio quality that you're about to hear from my end. The counselors was pristine. Our team has tried so hard to fix it as much as they can. So stay tuned and we'll be right back after a quick message with cross-border interviews featuring Lac La Biche County Counselor Charlene Moore. From the smallest village to the largest city across every region of the province, Alberta Municipalities represents the communities where over 85% of Albertans live. AB Munis provides a united voice for 265 of Alberta's 330 municipalities, including summer villages, villages, towns, cities, and specialized municipalities. As Alberta's largest municipal group, AB Munis listens to municipal leaders and advocates for solutions to their common issues. Additionally, AB Munis supports local governments by providing services specially designed to meet their operational needs. And they bring their members together regularly so they can share ideas and information so that their communities can thrive. Check out Alberta Municipalities at abmunis.ca and follow them on LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, now called X. Councillor, thank you so much for doing this. Greatly appreciate it. I want to start at the beginning, if you don't mind, by talking a little bit about you and who you are. So I got to start by asking the same question I've asked every single person who's ever come on this show, so you're no exception. Where did your sense of duty to serve your community come from, Charlene? Uh, thanks. So, you know, I've, I've actually heard you ask that question to a few people now. Um, and I guess I, I got to say that uh, it obviously came from my family. My um, my aunt and uncle who, I, my parents raised me, but also my aunt and uncle um, didn't have children. So I was theirs as well. Uh, and they were firefighters, you know, in that kind of sense. Um, so I got the, the duty from that. My mom volunteered in absolutely everything that I was involved in. If if I got involved in it, she got involved in it. And I'm not going to lie to you. I learned at a very young age in high school that if I didn't like a class, but I was the leader of some sort of group, um, yearbook, grad, whatever, I could get out of class. <laughs> so probably it came from there, um, <laughs> to be I honest. I love the honesty and already. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, uh, and to be honest, like I, I'm, my daughter is built the same way. Um, so, when so there's the that. Bug, when did the political bug bite you? So, you know, I grew up a lot, like in Fort McMurray, um, born and raised and typically, you know, you either loved it there or you hated it there. And if you hated it there is probably because you were working there and you, and you lived away. Um, but you had no problem coming and get your paycheck. Right. And so even as a teenager, uh, I'd be standing in like a coffee shop lineup and I'd be like, I listen to people complain. And I'd be like, you know, did you, and I, I am the type of person that goes, did you get involved? Did you do something? What did you do to fix that? Like, did you show up to the, the meeting about that? Did you show up to an event to help promote it? And so, um, fast forward, I moved to Lac La uh, to follow a, I'm, I'm an EMT by trade. And so I decided I did not want to work in Fort McMurray right away. I needed some experience and I'd gone to school here. So it, it made sense. So I took a job here with both the college um, in an intern position, teaching fresh out of college, which was terrible, terrible on my behalf. Um, but on top of that, I also uh, worked for the ambulance here. So I did that for a few years, realized that um, if I wanted to have a family, the type of scheduling that they worked, it wasn't going to work for me. So I um, 
I stayed and I got into real estate. So that's what I do here in my real life um, in Lac La Biche. Um, but I, you know, I started to realize that although I was deeply ingrained in the community, uh, my daughter and I uh, volunteered at every event. I'd come, I'd be a rotary member, but I'd bring her in her bucket, like her little car seat bucket. And I said, if you don't like the bucket, you don't get the mom, right? We're a package kind of thing. Um, and so I, I started to volunteer in absolutely everything, but I started to realize that it wasn't a community that I wanted to live in anymore. And if I was deeply ingrained in a community that was mine, was not mine, you know, I didn't grow up here. Um, but if I was deeply ingrained and truly loved a place, but it wasn't quite what I wanted it to be for my daughter, I, I had two choices. I could do something um, more, like I sat on the chamber prior to that, and Rotary Club and, and a bunch of other things. But if I wanted to do something more and I wanted to make it a community that myself and my daughter wanted to live in, um, this was my next step. And so when the counselor that was pre, pre, pre me, she wanted to retire. So she said, if you want to do it, this is a good time. And so I said, okay, let's do it. So now it's been six years. So this is my second term. So, okay. There's a few things I want to unpack there, if you don't mind. Sure. But I, want to, I want to start by asking this question because it's the important one. What was it about municipal politics that made you want to get involved? Because I For traditionally sure. try not to do a lot of research on my guests, but I do do some because I want to be a little bit informed. And you're you're active in both provincial and federal politics as well. And you seem to have a passion for municipal politics as well. So six years ago, what made you say, OK, this is the level I want to potentially put my effort into? I looked at the community and knew that it could be better knew that the bones are here, um, but it needed something to to really grasp a family, to keep children engaged. We have uh, a large, you know, road infrastructure. Um, thankfully, there's a plebiscite about 12 years ago, and we received a lovely at recreational center, but that was hard fought to win that. Um, the community really was against it with the potential of raising taxes and all of the things. But to be honest, uh, going through the recession, that bull center saved us, right? Having having that um, facility has saved and brought people here. So we needed more, you know, we needed splash parks for kids. We we needed uh, programming for, for our kids, uh, a relationship with the college that would, would ensure that, you know, um, everybody's successful, but our kids stay. You, okay, so six years into office now, I, I I would I would hazard a guess because I like to do this on this show. I would hazard a guess that you've come to the realization, even talking about that plebiscite, you've come to the realization you're not pleasing everything everyone with all the decisions you make. But at the end of the day, you have to make those tough choices. As one vote on said council, you have to make that tough choice. How do you make your choices at that council meeting that are in the best interest of the community while understanding that you're not pleasing 100% of the people? Yeah, it's true. Everybody wants change unless it changes them. Um, <laughs> and that's a hard realization to come to. But uh, to be honest, I, I take every, every question that comes to us, every decision that comes to us, and I think, what does my daughter need? What do her friends need? What do, what do the families need to come back here, stay here, not leave at all in the first place? Um, and and how do we do it both economically, but, uh, you know, you got to spend money. Sometimes you got to spend money uh, to attract and, and engage people. Is that hard? Because you talk about the recession and right now in 2024, we're recording this. Uh, it, it, it's tough out there and there's a lot of people living paycheck to paycheck and we we often talk about the federal and provincial governments have sort of are, are, are sort of somewhat of the cause of that but municipalities play a role in the day-to-day -day lives probably a little bit more often than those other two levels of government so the decisions you make at that table impact your people not six months from now but literally day two three four days afterwards yeah absolutely um is it tough? Yeah. We know Lackawish County is very lucky um, to have a lot of support by our industry. So 
taxation wise, 70, oh, above 70% um, of our taxes are paid by industry. So we do enjoy some of the third lowest taxes in Alberta um, with some of the highest uh, service level. And uh, it, it just takes you to leave town um, and look at another community with eyes eyed open, mind you, um, but to, to look around and see the services that you get in Edmonton. And I don't mean, you know, like the Costco's and the, you know, the, that's retail. I'm talking about like the street clearing, um, the, the, the children's programming. Uh, you really would be hard pressed, especially, well, especially in the summer, but truly year round to find an that to not find an event, sorry, for meant for kids and families, that's free. And, and I don't mean once a month, I mean, three, four times a month, depending on the age bracket. Do you find people in Lackawish County, and particularly your, your ward, let's talk about your ward for a second. Do you find people in your ward willing to give their opinion on the issues that are in front of them today? Um, I would say 20 years ago, 10, 15 years ago, you'd probably find some people who would actually want to attend a council meeting or who would actually read the agenda package that comes out before council meetings. Um, I would be, again, get hard pressed, but hard pressed to find people who'd actually want to sit down and read a hundred page agenda package and figure out what's going on in the community. Do you get a sense that people are engaged enough with what's going on in the community that they will, when they approach you, talk about things that are going on? Or is it the same mantra that I often say, as long as my water is turned on and my garbage is picked up at the end of the day and my taxes are low, I'm content with what's going on and we've elected you to do the job, so just go do it. Yeah, I don't get a, a lot of complaints, um, but I do get but some. Do you get engagement, though? Head. Yeah, engagement's hard. So it's like, how do I get that out there? Two, three, four times, different avenues, newspaper, social media, signs. Uh, literally, we just did a a uh, fire smart event in a couple of my communities. And so I door knocked and like people were like, oh, hi. <laughs> and I was like, hi, come for a barbecue. You know, and I we saw seven. But uh, hey, whatever, we got seven, right? Seven people learned about fire smart. So is, is it hard to engage? Yes. Did people pay attention? You know what? One of the things that when we came in uh, six years ago was to put our meetings on video um, and to actually uh, host them for an extended period of time. So that I thought was really important. I pushed to get evening meetings. Um, one, I was a single mom. And uh, although evening meetings were harder for me than that I had to find a babysitter, uh, it was easier because I thought more people would be engaged, right? And more people would understand. And a higher quality and more people would actually want to run as well, right? I have a very flexible job in what I do. So I was, I'm able to, to kind of do both, um, but not for everybody, right? Uh, so I lost the, the night, um, which is fine, but I did, we did um, secure cameras. And I think it's important. And I do have lots of residents that watch, whether they're my award or other wards. I do have lots of residents that watch. Um, and uh, quite often I'll have, you know, Facebook open on my on my phone or on my computer and uh, ding, ba ding, ba ding, ba ding, right? And um, so in the breaks, I'll answer and be like, oh, you saw that. Oh, you didn't like that. Okay, well, like how, what would you like to have done, right? But for the most part, I think that people just want to feel like they're heard and that they can, and even if they're not heard, um, or because they don't need to be heard. They want the ability to know what's happening, what's going on. You you being elected by the people of Ward 5 in your in uh, Lackawish County, but when you're sworn into office, you're not sworn into office as Ward 5 Councillor. You're sworn in as Lackawish County Councillor. Have you yes. been able to balance the needs and wants of your ward with the needs and wants of the county? Because not every issue is going to be a ward five issue but not everything is going to be a not 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 all the issues that you bring forward are going to be a county issue so you're going to have to strike a balance of sort of adhering to the county as a whole with the ward as a whole as their elected official but you have to remember that everything has to be looked at through the lens as a lack of ish county lens not a ward five yeah, and that kind of plays into specialized municipality, right? So, um, in in many um, in in many locations, uh, Westlock, um, Athabasca, they'll have um, 
the the town and then the county but so that that means there's there's two sets of employees there's two sets of counselors there's two sets of and so years back kudos to this community they decided that they would get together and do it do it as one um does that mean that everybody agrees no does <laughs> that mean that uh, when we we're we're currently in the middle of a revitalization of our main street it's a three year project uh we pushed for it the last year of my lap first term um, unfortunately, we didn't get going until almost the end of the first year of the second term, um, which meant two things. One, we're not done until 2025, uh, 2026 even. Um, and another thing is that costs tripled because of the inflation and everything, right? So would I have loved to have seen that sooner? Yeah, absolutely. But um, there's people out in the, in the rural areas going, well, I work, I work from home. I'm a farmer. Like I don't come to town and I don't need it. Yes, but eventually your children will, right? Eventually, if this town dies um, or commit or or gathers no tourism or gathers no um, economic development, your children won't be farm kids. Some of them might, but some like a lot of them won't. You know, I I have a farmer friend that uh, he fought for years um, about all of the things that we were doing within the community, and then he looked at me the other day and he went, "Some my kid's not coming back." They went to Edmonton to school and they're not coming back. And I'm like, yeah. And don't be wrong. My daughter might do the same, but yeah, that's what we have to, like, that's what we have to try to do. We have to try to keep our kids here and we have to try to keep investment into our community, whether that's outside investment coming in or, or um, investment dollars, or even just buy into projects, right? Buy into community. So before we turn to the lack of issues uh, the county as a whole, I want to just ask one final question in the sort of personal side of the, the interview. And, I, and I, you brought her up, so I want to just ask the question because I've asked it a few times. How does your daughter like uh, being the uh, daughter of a counselor? And I'm assuming she doesn't come to the grocery store with you often because you're talking no. about it. <laughs> um, the child has grown up without a schedule um, in utter chaos. Uh, my life has always been, so to be honest, like makes her a lovely human being. Um, she does not need a schedule. She used to have her morning naps in the bucket underneath my desk and afternoon naps at home. Then we would rotate so that I could keep a schedule of a non-schedule for her. Um, and the first couple years, she thought it was fantastic. As she gets older and my time, she wants more of my time and my time is divided. She definitely is less of a fan. Although I will tell you, I was listening to your podcast uh, the day after you had reached out to me. Um, I generally try to listen in when I, when I know the people or if they're like local, you know, local -ish, like Northern, you know. Um, but for whatever reason, I was like, yeah, I'll listen today. And so it, it was somebody from Ontario completely. And my daughter asked like, why are you listening to that? And I said, well, actually I'm gonna get interviewed next week. And she's like, that is super cool, mom. That is super cool. So she does appreciate it. And you know what I love too is um, last summer she was walking some of her friends down our main street. And unfortunately it's at points, it's like a cage because the entire street is being renovated. So we have 80 year old infrastructure that had to go. Um, so, but sidewalks might as well go as well. Otherwise you're just drilling holes in concrete, right? So we're doing the whole thing from infrastructure to ground and uh, beautification and so one of her friends was complaining about the the longer walk because of the cage and she's like mom I told her all the reasons why we're doing it and it's going to be fabulous and so um she may not love it and you're right she does not come to the grocery store with me anymore um she's going to be a human like this she is going to be well informed very involved and uh you know what I guess if that's if if it takes that I have to go grocery shopping alone, but I'm I'm raising a human that that really wants to be involved, then then that's all right. Um, but in the side note, my my husband doesn't come with me to the grocery store either. <laughs> so it's either um, me or them, but it's never us all together. <laughs> and that's your downtime, right? That's your downtime. Yeah, <laughs> that's my downtime. Yeah, not really, but yeah. <laughs> um, just. I wasn't. I was going to ask this a little bit later, but I want to ask it now because it, it's a delicate balance of a municipal a politician, municipal leader, especially in outside of the larger cities. Let's say because you are not a full time worker, you're not a full time uh, municipal leader. But the moment you leave your house, you are 
that counselor. No matter how hard you try to take that hat off, people will always view you through that lens. Have you been able to strike a balance of being just Charlene and then also being counselor more? Because there are people, and you just talked about it a little bit there for a few seconds, that you say, I'm not sure if I can be that counselor because I do have a ch young child. I do have a full-time job. What advice would you give that prospective candidate and say, if you want to do it, this is the way you need to do it? Absolutely. Um when I first decided to do it, like I said, it was, it was just something that I was like, I'm either moving or I'm doing this. Um, I had no idea. So I started watching a couple meetings, well, going to, cause they weren't actually publicized. So I sat in the gallery for a little while. Actually, my first term I was acclaimed. Um, so I didn't have any of the, I didn't have to, I didn't have that month long of like talking to residents, right. While I was trying to campaign, I just was like, Oh, it's me. Oh, Okay. Yeah. So I started watching other communities that did publicize like Fort McMurray and Edmonton and Calgary and all that. Two completely different worlds. <laughs> Two utter completely different worlds. But still, um, I did my best to try to watch, right? So anybody that's interested in thinking about doing it, I tell them the same thing. Um, have an expectation of what you're going to do. Um, watch these videos, follow along on some, you know, on some of the topics and the interests. Uh, speak to people, get out there and, and and see where your thoughts align with your residents, but also how you handle it if they don't. Um, I think that's important. And um, and know that if you're doing it right, it is more than part time. So but I had with part time uh, pay though. <laughs> It with part-time pay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just, just yeah, no, definitely. For those people who are like, oh, it's a full-time job with full-time pay. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. No. Nah, nah, uh -uh. <laughs> no. No. I mean, I guess if you're able to live off of that, sure. But no. Um, <laughs> as a single mom, I sure wasn't, right? So it's a little easier. I mean, I have the second income, but what, my own second income. Um, yeah. But so yes, I'll, for sure. I want to flip a little bit to the 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 Lackawish County as a whole. Yes. And if you've listened to the show, you know that I'm about to go into a rant here. So please apologize. Well, if you want to skip this for the next 20 seconds, anyone who's listening, go ahead. But if not, <laughs> if this is the first time you're tuning into the show, please stay with us for the next 20 seconds. This is a conversation between the counselor and myself. This is not a motion of counsel, not a direction of counsel, not a policy of counsel. This is the counselor's opinion and her opinion alone. She has one vote on said counsel. The issues that she might talk about in the next few minutes may line up with what's going on at council, but this is yet again her opinion. Please don't send emails. If you do, I will file them in the appropriate location as I always do. <laughs> Counselor, in your opinion, yes. as of recording this episode in 2024, what do you believe is the biggest challenge or challenges facing, and I'm going to sort of put it a double-edged way here, Ward 5 of Lac La Biche County, but also... Lac La Biche County as a whole? So I wouldn't say that Ward 5 in particular has a whole lot of challenges. Uh, I have a mix of estate, like half to one acre lots, subdivisions, and I have a mix of farmers. So maybe you want a park in your neighborhood, which, you know, there's one of my communities that wants a park, working on that. Um, that took longer, like that's taken almost three years because I didn't have land from the developer, right? So there's there's all of the things that you don't think about ahead of the things that you're thinking about. Um, so, and also I should step back to that, like advice to the other counselors. If you think you're going to get it done in a year, add two. <laughs> I've never seen anything move slower. <laughs> it's insane. Even when it's moving quick, it's, it's, it's way too slow for me. But um so, so that, you know, there's a park, there's a sign, you know, there's a road maybe that we want paved. Um, but overall, I think people really want the community to grow. They want the community to be something that um, they can stay in as they age, that their kids can stay in, that they can raise their grandkids in. You know, that's, I think, the bulk of it. Um, that can I interject here for a second because I just want yeah. to make sure I, I understand things. If I don't understand them, potentially there's a listener. Who go, what do you mean by growth? Are you talking about housing? Are you talking about infrastructure? Are you talking about uh, ec like economically more commercial spaces? 
what are you talking about when you say mentioned growth? Because that's a big load of question. Because if you say housing, then I'm going to sort of flip the question and say, what about the, and I hate to use the word, but the nimbyisms in the world, right? The people who say, I don't yeah. want growth. And you go back to that farmer that you're talking about, but he wants to keep his community the way it is because he 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 moved there for a reason, for that sort of small town feel. So what do you mean by growth? For sure. Um, all of the above. <laughs> all of the above um we are short housing and i can tell you that from my real estate side um it's a no-brainer we are short housing uh even prior to me being on council or even prior to the recession prior to covid prior to the recession like when we had uh, a huge boom um we've really only felt a couple busts but like we've had a lot of growth and in in um population and so i can go from i can show you houses in the 500 range maybe six of them, but in the 400 range, maybe two of them and at 300 range, one of them and it's 200 range, none of them. Right. So you, you sell one house and we're in a shortage, just like that. Prices go up. Um, so that's, that's the hard part, right. In a small community, but it's also when, when, uh, provincial dollars, federal dollars and, and just mindset, uh, developer mindset, they're focused on large cities, right? Because you're going to sell, 40 instead of maybe four that year. So it's really hard um, as a realtor, as a, as a counselor, you know, whatever, whatever hat you want to, you want to wear in the community. It's really hard to get developers outside developers to look in and see that it's, it's successful here, but it's a smaller growth scale for sure. Um, so we, we need doing anything. Yeah. Is Lac La Biche doing any, Lac La Biche County, I should say, because I don't want to make- Or like housing right now? Yeah, like is there incentives that you are putting into place to sort of attract those developers? Because that's the key part here. You can throw money at the housing problem as any level of government, but if developers do not develop because of the challenges of, with inflation, the cost of pricing, and even like you said, I could build 40 houses in downtown Edmonton and I could build four in Lac La Biche, which one am I going to make more money on? Well, I'm going to yeah. choose the 40. So what yeah. incentives is the county doing to putting in place to ensure that developers say, hey, maybe we should actually go look at those four houses because we might get a bigger bang for our buck. So there, we don't have any in place right today, but we are having the conversations. Um, there's communities around us that have, they have some lots that are serviced already and they've, they're have they selling them for like $15,000. Um, Lackawas County, unfortunately, doesn't own service residential lots at this point <laughs> could we sure um and maybe that's the route that we go um but right now we're working on retail and uh, we're, we're really trying to firm up our our land use bylaws so that they're they, they flow and they're easy and they're developer friendly um while, while still allowing that backyard chicken coop so that's a right yeah um, I love backyard chicken poops. I'm sorry. Yeah. yeah, you know what though, and and since COVID, it's gotten more prevalent, right? Uh, food security. Everybody wants to make sure that they've got that. I just want my neighbor to have the chicken and sell me the eggs. I don't want the chickens. But um, if I could just be like knock on their door and pick up my eggs for the week, absolutely. I'm I'm in. I'm in. Um. So what are, are we doing? Talking? I guess we could do go, that. Go ahead. But yeah, no, so that's we, it. Like we we could, okay. but we haven't yet. Mm -hmm. So you talk about housing growth, but the flip side to any conversation around growth is infrastructure, infrastructure, infrastructure. And with a tax base that is 70% from uh, commercial, uh, commercial, that it's seems like it's a, yeah. industrial, sorry, industrial, I apologize for that, industrial, that seems like it's a very good spot to be in from a growth perspective. Are you set up for potential growth five, 10 years from now today if, if a developer comes in tomorrow and says, you know what, we want to be able to grow in your community. We want to build 500 housing units in, in Lac La Biche County tomorrow, and you'll have to say yes or no because the infrastructure, whether it be roads, underground sewage, X, Y, and Z, because you're both urban and rural, you've got that divide there. Um, do you see that Lac La Biche is set up for potential growth if it decides to sort of one day trickle down? We are. So we are. it's definitely that chicken and the egg. How do you get yeah. the businesses if you don't have places for people to live, right? We, de we yeah. definitely have that right now. 
but we do have um, quite a bit of cell, of service land. Our our uh, water source, and obviously we have a, a large lake that is our water source, but our BNR plant, our water source, um, they're exponential. We, we planned it, not me, but years back when they built it, um, they planned it for growth. So we have a lot of room to grow within our water systems. Um, we are like this council in the last six years and, and even in the last probably decade, they have put effort into servicing lines further away from the centers into acreages and whatnot. Um, so we do, we're ready. We have the space 100%. Um, we just need somebody and unfortunately, it is, it's the cost of building, it's the cost of inflation, it's the cost of lending right now. Um, we, we have it, we just need to get past that hurdle. And I that's a big one to get past. And it's not going to be solved in a 45 to an hour conversation. No, I, I appreciate <laughs> that. So I want to sort of flip the question originally that I talked about challenges. And I was going to talk about accomplishes here in two seconds, but I'm going to do that if, later on. Yeah. If I go to Lacklebish County tomorrow and I talk to 100 people in your community, I guarantee you, I guarantee you, I will put dollar to dime on it right now that there will be at least 100 different voices talking about the different issues that they have, whether it be yeah. park upgrades, whether it be recreational upgrades, service levels, uh, infrastructure, road, potholes, you name it. Municipalities do not have an unlimited supply of money as much as people may think they do. You have a budget and you have to balance every single year. And that means some people's issues are not going to be solved. It's the name of the game. It's the reality that, of the municipal landscape that we live in. How do you, as a council and as a counselor, address individual issues without making them feel like their issue is not important? I mean, for me, I, I, I want you to tell me your issue. Um, I want to hear your solution, which is quite often this solution, right? The number one, the 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 best of the best. Um, I'll then toss back at you, what are you willing to do for it? Like, are you are you willing to take on a levy? Are you willing to take on, um, you know, up up to taxes? Uh, again, I said our our taxes are some of the lowest in in the province. We do not charge much, uh, many things levied. Um, so our water sewer system, if if you're outside of the hamlets, you you get a, a levy for the water sewer. But uh, for example, um, six years ago, for about five years, they did every sidewalk in our two major hamlets and there was no levy. So that, and that's so just that, that sidewalk in front of John's house is not being subsidized by just John. It's being subsidized by Martha, who lives in Ward 2. So therefore, Ward 5 gets that sidewalk. Understand, we'll just want to make that clarified for those who are listening. Yes. Thank you very much for that. Yes. No, that's 100% it, right? Um, and so that's why you've got guys um, in like the country that they they have they have gravel roads, which get which get snow cleared and uh, and we have an excellent snow clearing program here but um very very top uh but we have snow clearing and we have grading and you have garbage that is darn near free we have very low water rates um very low sewage rates like to accept your sewage and so those are all things that are subsidized but you also have a municipal um aquatic center being built here that'll open up in 2025, right? You also have the 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 um, Bold Center. It's our recreational center that was built like now 11 or 12 years ago. Um, but you, you know, you have parks that we're building and all of the things. So boat launches. And so you may not have a boat, but it still ties into the overall community, right? And so really just trying to get that across to people that, yes, you know what, your taxes, but my taxes are, are twice as high because I don't, I do have more services than you do kind of thing, right? Do you get a sense that there um, is a community within Lacklebish? Because we we often talk about the individualism that's going on in our society today. It's us versus me. It's me versus them. Heck, yeah. we look at even sports analogies, right? Like it's always Calgary versus Edmonton because who's going to get the bigger arena? Who's going to get things? But in Lacklebish County, do you get a sense that when things get tough, people are willing to sort of come together and sort of build that community that is going to prosper for not 2025, but 2055, 2085. 
I really do think so. Um, you know, it's I raising my daughter here. It it was one of the reasons why I wanted to stay. I always knew that she was safe. I always knew that somebody was looking out for her. Um, but <clears throat> sorry, excuse me. Uh, there's huge donation, time, money, effort put into Plamondon. They built a, a like a rec hall as well a few years back now, um, 12 or 15. But that was huge community involvement, right? And it wasn't just like, here's 50 bucks. Tom showed up with his backhoe, like, and the 50 bucks, right? So um, Stephen showed up and he laid the floors. Like, there's lots of things that happen. And uh, we because we have so many community halls, um, that the the county does help with their like their funds, um, but it's also by the community. So if if Hilo Hall needs needs some new flooring or needs a paint job, they don't always price it out. They they get together and and it's like a barn raising, right? And so because you have those those organizations and those people, like it is it is a truly a community here. So yeah. I want to flip the question because I'm cautious of time here and I want to ask about the accomplishments. But before we do that, I want to make sure that you know, uh, because we're going to talk about the sort of tourism destinations in two seconds here, but I want to know the accomplishments from the government's standpoint, from an administration standpoint. So what is the thing that you are most proud of when it comes to what goes on from a governmental perspective in the uh, Latinx County? So, like, do you want to hear about the projects that we're doing? Because right now it's like Whatever three years. Whatever you think season. is the thing that you, yeah. when you, when you go to Alberta municipalities, when you go to RMA, yeah. when you go to, because this is airing the Monday prior to FCM, when you come to FCM this week, what's the thing that you, when you, when people talk to you about how the great their community is, you'll say, no, you know what, you're doing it good. Lac La Biche is doing it better. Lac La Biche County is doing it better. This is what sure. we've got going. So you can talk about whatever you want, but talk about sure. it from a governmental perspective because we're going to talk about it from a community perspective in two seconds. Okay. Yeah, no, it sounds good. Um, so honestly, I, I think kudos goes out to years back when they amalgamated. That That is hands down, um, I think, the smartest thing that they could have done. And I encourage all of the communities that are kind of in that uh, to figure it out, right? I know it's a lot harder. Um, they cost, things cost more and, and you know, everything is heated and, and NIMBYism became a thing now, but I kudos to the, to the people that foresaw that. Like, I really do think that was a good thing. Um, municipally, we are under construction, welcoming by nature, but under construction for the next three years. Um, our aquatic center opens in 2025. Uh, our main how excited street are the kids of that? Sorry. How how excited? How are excited? The kids, how excited oh. are the kids of Blackfish County for a aquatic center? <laughs> they are excited. Actually, my daughter's 15 now, and she's like, "Why couldn't you have done this three years ago when I like actually liked the pool?" And I was like, "Dude, you're gonna like the pool. Like, it's gonna be great." Um, <laughs> we have we have rivalries with our like playful rivalries with our little supporting communities and and we always just like to our to our uh contractors and, and our consultants we're like but are we better then because that's all that matters are we better then right and then i'll call and tell my counterparts in those communities be like just so you know we're a little bit better <laughs> <laughs> so it's just fun but um so yeah the aquatic center the main street revitalization um MacArthur Park is a large park within the center of Laclavish County, um, or Laclavish Hamlet, sorry, that um, is being renovated with a bump track and walking paths. And uh, part of my like outside uh, role is I I sit on, there's about six of us, and we we uh, put on a Christmas tree parade every, mm -hmm. Santa Claus parade every year. And um to do that, we actually like go to the community and say, who has a nuisance tree, one that needs to come down 20 feet or bigger, and uh, we'll cut it down for you. We'll bring it into town. We'll set it up and we'll pay the insurance and we'll do that and we'll we'll light it up. Um, but it's a lot of work. It's a lot of effort and it's a lot of insurance. <laughs> so eventually um, in this park, in MacArthur Park, we will I will have a, uh, a holiday tree um, or a my light of the night tree um but that being said it's still too small to use so it'll be another like five six years at least because it's got to be an impressive tree right um uh, we're doing also the same thing town square in plamondon so we're trying to make sure that everybody has and then you know as that one gets done then 
we go out to the smaller communities and make sure that everybody has their space. Is Plamondon within Lackawish County? Yes. Yeah. So I, thought it was their, I thought it was its own separate entity. So how much I pay it's, attention to how that's many okay. yeah, it's one of our hamlets. <laughs> okay. It's yeah, it's one of our hamlets. So I want to turn to my last subject now. That's my favorite Perfect. subject because I'm doing a big tour through northeastern Alberta in July, and I'm coming to Lackawish County. So I will be there. What are you coming for? And what that's what you're about to tell me. You're about awesome. to tell me what I need to see while I'm in Lackawish County. So, counselor, and I don't want the, the, the things that are on the websites. I want the hidden gems. What are the hidden gems in Lackawish County that you say, you know what? If you come, you need to see this. Oh, I'm prepared for this question. No problem. Um, so if you come to Lackawish County, uh, you can take part of a lot of tourism. So we have like the largest uh uh uh, oh my gosh, the largest arrow, sorry, um, for archery. It's the largest archery arrow. So like you go to Mundare and you see the sausage, you go to you go to uh, Vilna and see the um the mushrooms. So we have the largest arrow. And uh the first time ever that World Archery put on a tournament in North America, they came to Lackawish County. So not only did they do that a few years back, they're doing it again this summer. So that is cool. Again, never went to Toronto, didn't go to Chicago, Lackawish County. And we can thank our, like we have a very active archery um, club and we can, we can thank that one member for all of that hard work. But in July, we have the Lakeland County Fair. Uh, so that is like July 12th and 13th. And I have notes, so I have to look down, sorry. So I didn't want to get the dates wrong. No but um, so last year, the uh, Lakeland Country Fair and Rodeo put on the very first sanctioned wife carrying contest in Alberta. Yeah, there's a YouTube video. I'll send it to you. You've got to watch it. It's fantastic. When she sends it to me, you know, if she sends it by the time of publication, it's going to be in the show notes, everyone. So please check that out because I, yeah, I if I have to watch it, everyone else who watches this has to watch it as well. It is awesome. It is absolutely awesome. Um, what else is happening in July? Because I want to make sure that you catch that. Um, what What are some of the destinations though? What are some of the destinations? Like, is there a mountain peak that people need to climb? Is there, there's, and I say mountain peak, mountain like, peak. exactly. <laughs> That's what I literally said that. It's like, the, Chris, you've been to Lackawish. It's not that. <laughs> <laughs> we have the Great so Divide, but that's low, <laughs> not high. Uh, um, yeah, so, and then the Plumond and Bugs are also in July. But so like, okay, so what else cool things that you can do in Plumond and, or in Lackawish County, sorry, that are not like yet on a website really or not yet really fully pushed out there? Are, we have a, bee, a local bee farm and they just took funding from Tra Travel Alberta for a growing dome and a learning pod. So you will now be able to go and you go and do tours of the, of the apiary if you'd like, but later on this summer, they will actually have an outdoor classroom where you can learn all about bees. So that's really cool. Um, we have a, t a photography tourism. If you want to come and learn how to take um, and where to find, um, and primarily like landscaping and animals, we can set you up with, with a tourism. Uh, you want to go and backcountry canoe? We've got a circuit for that too. So there is a lot. Do you have canoe um, rentals? There's canoe rentals. You can rent uh, canoes, paddle boards, all of that here. Um, in the winter, you can rent fishing, ice fishing shacks. I'm moving. So, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, so, can I ask uh, where you go? Churchill. Sorry? Where do you go? After where do a long I go? day of council meetings, after a long day in your day-to-day -day job, after a long day being mom, wife, where is the spot in the community that you go to decompress and let it all go? So not my backyard, hey? Um, you can say if your backyard, but that's, <laughs> yeah. that's, that's, that's the quick escape that that's most people scary. say. And I go, I feel bad for counselors who just want to sit in their backyard and not be part of their community, but okay, sure, go ahead. You want to say your backyard? Uh, you know, 
for for me it's nature so um and I'm not much of an outdoor in the winter I'm a very indoor cat in the winter so you will not find me cross-country skiing which you can you will not find me on a quad trail or a skidoo trail which you totally can we have all those here um but you will find me in the summertime uh, out in uh, Touchwood Lake area it has paths lakes you can portage by a canoe to multiple different lakes um, and the only way you can get to some of the backcountry lakes are by portaging in a canoe. Oh, wow. Yeah. So that's where you'll find me. But but I am a fair weather outsider. <laughs> and I'm the reverse. Summer, can't take it. Winter, oh. give me all the cold. I'll be outside in shorts and a sunscreen on because I'm a very person. I'll burn in the middle of the winter, for God's sakes. Um <laughs> So I'm conscious of time here, and I want to ask my final question before I let you sure. go here. And it's an important one. We started by talking about you. We're ending by talking about Lackawish County. So in your opinion, what makes Lackawish County such a unique place to live, to work, and to raise a family council? Sure. Uh, so I'll just speak personally. Um, I I know my daughter is safe here, and for, for many years I was a single mom, and I knew if she skipped school, somebody was telling me. Um, so you have that sense. And it wasn't because they wanted to tell her. They wanted to make sure she was safe and she was where she needed to be. Um, and that, I think, is the most important thing here is everybody looks out for everybody else. You know your neighbors. Uh, you know their names. And and they come out and help if you need something. So, yes, sometimes you have to go look for that. Like, absolutely. I know someone's going to be listening to this and go, that's not my experience. Um, but... I challenge you, if it's not your experience, to get out and find somebody, like to get out and meet somebody, to join a club, to to do something that is in your your wheelhouse, because the only way that you can make any community unique, special, and fantastic to live in is by being a part of it. Counselor Charlin, I want to thank you so much for doing this. This Bowl of laughs. Um, I'm looking forward to meeting you at FCM. So for those who don't Absolutely. know, uh, Councillor Moore, uh, Moore has put her name forward for the FCM Board of Directors, which is taking place. Uh, the election is taking place from June 6th to June 9th. The election day, I think it's June 9th, if I'm not mistaken. Correct me if I'm wrong, Councillor. I, I do think it is June 9th, yeah. Okay. So I, I'm not I'm not I'm not a creep without a paddle. Do you mind the proverbial uh, portage canoe reference there um but I, I i wish you luck in your election uh i, I will be there in uh, at fcm in calgary as well so hopefully we can connect and say hi to each other and grab a sort of quick coffee but also when i'm up in lackmavish county hopefully we can grab a coffee there and you could show me some of these great destinations as well I absolutely would love to yeah we'll we'll keep touch and i'll send you some links i'll definitely send you the wife carrying one right away um, because that needs to be in here. I think it was so fast. I was unfortunately out of town um, when it happened, but friends of mine were sending me videos and I just like thought it was amazing. And so they're doing it again. Um, but they they saw it in Europe. It's po it's popular in Europe, I guess. And and they wanted to bring it here, but they actually went the extra and got it sanctioned. So if you win this, you can actually go off to like somewhere in Europe and, and compete in the National so I, 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 I said that was my last question, but now that you said you're going to be here this year, I've got to ask, uh, is the husband and you entering into this year's competition? Uh, you know what? So uh, I put on about three pounds since council, so I'm not really sure that he wants to carry me, but I'll check with him. I don't think so. I don't know what to say to that. I'm just going to say you thank you to. so much, counselor, for doing this. <laughs> Thanks so much for tuning in for another great episode of Cross Border Interviews. If you've enjoyed today's episode, wherever you're listening to this or viewing this, hit that subscribe or follow button now. Stay in the loop with all our diverse content that we have coming up for you over the next few weeks before our summer hiatus later on in July. Now, if you can, consider backing the show. Every contribution, big or small, amplifies the depth and the breadth of our programming. Find the support page link on the Cross Border Interviews website today. Until next time, stay informed, stay engaged, and most importantly, but as always, just keep talking. Mm -hmm.